Hi, my name is Matthew Belisario. Welcome to Epitome Training. Today we're going to be covering call groups. We're starting off here on the Epitome main web page. I just wanted to point out something before we begin. Uh, be familiar with the support tab on the Epitome website and then the wiki page. Under the wiki page, you can search for call groups up in the top right hand side and you'll be able to search for any number of articles on call groups. And once you have that, you'll be able to go through and find out everything you want to know about call groups. Today, we're going to be just covering the basic programming. If you want to know more, check out the wiki. Always, always uh, know where your wiki is. What we're going to do now is go to the admin side of your Epitome PBX, and we're going to log in. We're logging into the demo system here. Now, call groups come standard with all Epitome software, all Epitome Phones, all the systems come with this feature. You can have as many call groups as you like, whether it's the 1100, 1200, 2000, 5000. They all have the same feature. Um, so you can have as many call groups as you like. As much You can have the queuing. It's unlimited. Uh, on the left-hand side here is all your programming selections. They're all drop-down menus. And what we do is we have everything laid out on, a, on the best way we feel it is to program the system. So it's kind of a hierarchy here going from top to bottom. Here we're looking at destinations. The first thing you would have programmed would be your extensions. Um, the easiest way to program your extensions initially is to use the Epitome worksheet, load in your information, convert it to a CV CSV file, and then load it into your Epitome box. We're going to assume you've already had the extensions made. Now we're going to go to groups. Call groups, again, you can have as many as you like. We're going to be looking at the sales group here today. Here we see we have the name, which you can make whatever you want, sales, tech support, so on and so forth. So we have sales typed in this one. Then you'll need to pick in a three or four digit unique number. This one is 1,000. Perhaps your tech support is 1,001 and so on. Next is paging. This is going to be a general page. If this box is checked, a star star dial before the four digit extension will page all the phones in that group. For the sake of this example, we're going to say we have six phones. So if you did star star 1000, all those six phones would come off hook and you would make a page. Next, the very important part is ring strategy. This determines how all of your incoming traffic is going to route to the group. These selections, I must say, will change a little bit in the next software release. So I just want to make that clear, and it's probably going to be the round robin and round robin with memory. But for the sake of this tutorial here, I will just go through both. Um, ring all is simply ring all the phones. Call comes into the group, rings all six extensions and then whoever grabs the call first gets the call. Round Robin, <clears throat> this is just a top-down approach ringing your members and as calls come in it'll rotate around all six phones starting at the top and going to the bottom. Um, however, the Round Robin with memory which is at the bottom which is probably the feature that we're going to keep because this is what most people select that what it is is round robin with memory just remembers where the uh, calls left off. So with regular round robin, uh, it's going to always start back at the top if that person's off. Um, with round robin with memory, it's going to know where the call left off. So if I, if I have six guys, six people on the phone, and the calls come in. And I answer, the first person answers one, the second person, the third person, and then there's an hour lapse between calls. The fourth call comes in, it's going to remember where it left off, and you're going to pick up that call. That's round robin with memory. Then you have least recent. That's just simply um, the most time that's lapsed since the previous call, whoever, whichever member has that, they're going to get the next one. Fewest calls is going to be that member which is taking the fewest calls is going to get the next one that comes in. Random is simply random. Call comes in, it picks one of the six phones, it rings it, and the person answers. Failover destination. This is pretty neat because you have a lot of selections here. You can make the failover go to wherever you want. 
Here we have it going to extension 137. You can have it go to any extension in the PBX. You can have it go to another ring group, a page group, send it over to a menu so they can choose to go someplace else. You can send it over to a conference, a voicemail so they can leave a message, a schedule, a branch office, and find me, follow me. So perhaps the failover goes to the supervisor um, and it'll ring their cell phone and their desk phone and whatever else they want to have on the find me, follow me. And here you just go to your drop down menu and you can pick exactly what you want. Timeout is going to be how many seconds the call is going to remain in the queue before it gets failed over to the failover destination that we chose above. Here we have 32 seconds. Allow recording is going to be for call recording for quality purposes. Perhaps you have your tech support or sales. You want to record all the calls. This will allow you to, to go back and listen. It will be tagged by date and time so that you can find the call. And then you can listen and see what the problem was or what was said or what wasn't said. Next, we have agent member ring time. This is going to determine how long the call is going to ring the particular member before it moves on to the next available member. So um, this is, you can just pick however many seconds you want. Here we have 32 seconds, then it's going to move on to the next one. Uh, you might want to make sure that you look at these two timers. Perhaps you want it to ring a couple of phones before it times out instead of just ringing one phone. So you just have to kind of play with that and determine what you what you want. Autofill. It's going to stack the calls in a queue. And if uh, it determines if new calls in a queue are allowed to enter the queue while the queue is currently occupied with other callers. So multiple calls are going to be delivered more quickly. It's just going to fall into the next person in line and it's going to roll them all right in there instead of waiting. This is simply yes or no. Ring in use. This is going to determine whether or not a member can receive more than one call. So let's say I have six, got six agents, or six members in this case. Uh, I should clarify the difference between agent and member. The call groups themselves can have either agents or members, but only formal ACD has agents. So in this case, we're going to be referring to members. Agents can log in from any phone, and that's a formal ACD. And we don't have formal ACD in this particular presentation, so we're just going to focus on members. So here, we have six members, six phones, and they're all tied up. A seventh call comes in. If we have this check yes, then the next person is going to be able to handle, handle two calls or multiple calls. So if they're on the phone, they can put the other person on hold or park, pick up the next one, and they'll handle more than one call. That's simply a yes or no selection. The retry timer depend, determines just how long it's going to wait between delivering calls to the next um, member. So when a member has not answered the call and the call goes to the next one, this is just a timer on how long it's going to wait until it does that. This We have two seconds. It seems like two is, is, is the selection to put in there. Um, and you just kind of add this into your total time. Next is your ring hold settings. And this is what the caller is going to hear. So here we have ringing. When the person calls the sales group, they're going to hear ringing. If I want them to hear music on hold, I can select music on hold. And I can select what hold music I want here down in this list. These can be uploaded or recorded. You can have messages or music or whatever you'd like. If you have ringing then you can select your ring selection here and that's just personal preference one neat feature in here is override hold music so if I have a particular company uh, that calls in and goes to a menu this is kind of related with menus and they select let's say I have a certain company calling in on a DID I can actually override this hold music and play this particular uh, message for that person calling in so it will override that whole music that's a pretty neat feature next custom caller ID normally it just you get the caller ID that comes in on the call however if I have a couple people in different groups a couple of 
people, maybe I have one person that's in a sales group and uh, in a tech support group. Maybe I want to send uh, what group it is on the caller ID. So what I'll do is I'll type this in, I prepend it, and coming in on your caller ID now to the person's phone, it's gonna say sales. Now I know it's a sales call, I can answer the call appropriately. So that's a pretty neat feature. This next section here is ACD settings. We're not going to go into that today. And as well as the key manager alerts that go along with the ACD. Down here at the bottom is where you're gonna add your extensions. Here I have six extensions. If I wanted to add extension 199, I simply select this, hit add, it moves it over here. If I wanna get rid of it, I move it out. One really nice feature is prioritization. If you notice, I click on each one of these extensions. If you look to the right here, these are all set at priority zero. However, let's say I have my two superstar salesmen, R100 and 101. Priority zero is my highest priority. Maybe 1810, maybe he's kind of a backup. I put him in there with a one, and maybe he is a one. Then let's say I just have these guys here. I just want those two people to answer. Uh, if the other four tied up, and I maybe I put a two in there. So what that does is that gives some prioritization. I can I can keep you know my two top guys busy all the time, and then I can have other people who are doing other things maybe fill in for them and help them out. So that's your basic programming for call groups. Again, refer to the wiki if you have any more questions, and thank you for attending this Epitome training video.